Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and in this video I'll be taking this 2011 27 inch iMac and turning it into an external display using this fantastic little device from Juicy Crumb. Just a reminder, please hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more tech content like this. I have in my hands here the version 4 functional prototype of a board that can be dropped into a 2011 27 inch iMac to repurpose it into an external monitor. Juicy Crumb are planning to release three different versions of this board. The first is the Juicy Crumb Dock Lite, which will be very similar to this prototype. The second is the Juicy Crumb Dock Pro, which not only turns your iMac into an external display, it also turns it into a dock, allowing you to use the SD card reader, optical drive, eyesight camera, speakers, and even the hard drive of the iMac on your dock laptop. The third is the Juicy Crumb Dock Pro Plus M1, which allows you to drop the logic board of an M1 Mini into the case of the iMac, turning it into a fully functional M1 in the 27 inch iMac case, with SD card reader, optical drive, eyesight camera, speakers, fans, and USB ports, all functional. All you have to do is supply the 2011 iMac and the M1. Now you might be asking, why would you take a fully functional computer and turn it into an external monitor? Well, firstly, the 2011 27-inch iMacs were plagued with GPU failures. Now while you can buy replacement GPUs for these, you have to ask yourself whether that's a sensible investment, given how old they are. So there are quite a few of these floating around with faulty GPUs, and you may be able to pick one up for cheap, or even for free. This iMac is actually fully functional, and I picked it up for 50 Australian dollars a couple of months ago. And up until a few minutes ago, it was in pristine condition, apart from one small chip in the glass near the top of the iMac. Now, thanks to me, it has a gigantic crack in it. Thankfully, replacement glass is still available for these on eBay. I don't know why I bought this iMac, as I have absolutely no use for it, but I just can't help myself when these things come up for cheap. One of the best things about these iMacs is that they look beautiful, and the big 27 inch 2560 by 1440 display is magnificent. And while the newer iMacs have got more sleek and thin with their fancy retina displays, they've also become incredibly difficult to open and service, and during this upgrade, we'll demonstrate just how easy it is to get into one of these 2011 iMacs. The 2011 27-inch iMac was available as a 2.7 GHz quad-core i5, a 3.1 GHz quad-core i5, or a 3.4 GHz quad-core i7. This one is the 2.7 GHz i5. I know it's 11 years old at the time of making this video, but in truth, this one still holds up pretty well. Yes, I know they'll get left out to dry when compared to a modern Mac, but that's not to say they're no longer usable. If you're just web browsing and emailing, they'll do that for you in style. Having said that, this computer has been sitting on the floor of my office doing nothing since I bought it. I just don't really have a job for it. However, if I can turn it into an external display, I can give one of my other Macs a nice big clear QHD monitor. So let's have a go at installing this Juicy Crumb prototype in this iMac. Speaking of prototyping, PCBWay provide excellent quality PCBs with a fast turnaround at a very low price. And they don't just do PCB manufacture. They also do PCB assembly, stenciling, flexible PCBs, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding. They really are a one-stop shop and the reason why I get all of my PCBs PCBs made at PCB Way. The first thing we need to do with this iMac is shut it down and unplug it. When we open this up, the power supply is exposed, so if it's still plugged in, you could get yourself into all sorts of mischief. You might find while working on your iMac that the display keeps swiveling, which can get a bit annoying. Grab yourself a towel, roll it up into a sausage, and shove it in here to keep the display from swiveling down. Next, we need to remove the glass from the front. I'm going to put some tape across all the cracks to hold it together during removal. I usually just remove the glass from these by putting my fingernail in the gap and sliding along until the glass releases from the magnets holding it in place. But you might want to use a suction cup like this. 
Either way, the glass is very thin, so you must be careful. Well, I got it off in one piece. I'm extremely happy about that. Next, we need to lay the iMac on its back and remove eight T10 Torx screws that are holding the LCD in place. As usual, no responsibility can be taken if you follow these steps and hurt yourself or your Mac. Now we need to gently lift the top of the LCD up, but not too far as there are cables attached to it and we don't want to break them. If you are having trouble lifting the LCD, bend a paper clip into a hook to lift up the corner here. Now we need to disconnect the vertical sink cable followed by the LED backlight driver cable, then the display data cable, and finally the display power cable. Now we can remove the LCD display from the iMac. Be really careful where you put this because this is one of the parts we need to keep. Be very careful around here. If the computer has been switched on recently, uh, you will find that there are capacitors on this power supply holding nasty charges. If you happen to touch your hand on the pins of one of those capacitors, uh, you will certainly know it. So just stay away from that altogether. Now we need to remove the parts we don't need. The logic board, GPU, and right pressure wall. Small tip for everyone, don't try and remove the logic board if you still have something plugged into the USB port. It'll make you feel a fool. There's a logic board and GPU. Goodbye. Now it is time for me to revert to my top secret instructions of how to install this prototype. This prototype has three cables that run out the bottom of the IMAX RAM access door. The display cable for the video signal, audio cable to use the IMAX speakers, and USB cable which will allow me to use the IMAX webcam on the attached computer. Be aware that the webcam functionality is not available for the Juicy Crumb dock light. The dock light will only have the display cable and the audio cable. During this process, I'm plugging in the left and right speaker connectors, the CPU fan, the power button and power supply. Okay, my recommendation would be when you're putting this board in here to stand it upright so you can feed it into the little slots at the bottom of the board. I also got a little bit caught out here because I was kind of expecting this board to sit flush, but it doesn't. It sort of sits a little bit proud here. Uh, the, the holes still line up with the screws, so we should be able to still screw it in and hold it in position, but it's sort of, it's held in position by sitting on this fan here rather than sort of uh, sitting against the screw holes. There's no real need to do all of the, uh, the screws here, replace all of the screws. I've just used this one and this one, and this thing's in pretty solid, so I'm not gonna bother doing any of the other uh, screws. It's held in place at the bottom via the little notch for the board to sit in, and that's, that's not going anywhere. Okay, I believe I am done. Without a doubt, the most difficult part of this process has been getting these cables uh, sitting underneath the board and out of the way. Uh, these are the uh, cables that will actually connect to the computer. Uh, so this is like your display cable and your audio cable and your, your uh, USB cable. Uh, and they come out a little notch. Um, well, they come out of the RAM slots at the bottom of the computer, but they feed through a little notch at the bottom of the uh, Juicy Crumb. And it's, it's a pretty, pretty fiddly process. I'm glad I don't have to be doing that again, but it's all done. Uh, so now I, 
can theoretically put it all back together and hopefully it will work. Okay, now it's time to test. Uh, I need to turn on the display first using the old power button from the iMac. I could hear it make a slight little, slight little pop as I switched it on, otherwise pretty silent. Now I'm gonna switch on my trusty 2012 MacBook Pro. Okay, and there it is. A beautiful big display here uh, attached to my MacBook Pro. Now I do have some brightness controls underneath here. You basically need to put your fingers through the RAM slots and you'll find two little press, little, little uh, push buttons under here. Um, I'm gonna press that and we can see that brightness going down. And then I press that one, you can see that brightness going up. A little bit tight for great big sausage fingers like mine, but still workable. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. To summarize, I have to say, this is a fantastic way to turn an otherwise obsolete old computer into a beautiful and unique external display. The installation was a little fiddly, but certainly not impossible. Juicy Crumb has a Kickstarter page and the links are in the description. If you're interested in one of these, click the link to see pricing and availability. I would like to thank the guys at Juicy Crumb for sending me this prototype to try. I have to say that I'm pretty pleased with it. And who knows, one day I may turn this iMac into an M1. So go check out the Juicy Crumb Kickstarter and thanks for watching.